Welcome to another episode of Guns 101. Our welcome to new gun owners brought to you by the Self-Defense Radio Network. My partner here is Amanda Suffolk with Eye on the Target Radio. I'm Rob Morse from Self-Defense Gun Stories. The guy doing all the heavy lifting behind the scene, that's Paul Lather from the Polite Society Podcast. We're all part of the Self-Defense Radio Network and the Polite Society Podcast. We have Charlie Cook with us today. That's Charlie from Riding Shotguns with Charlie and personal shooting instruction. Charlie, a lot of people have a gun in the house. It wasn't there before. How do they keep it safe? That's a great question, Rob and, and Amanda and Paul. There are a lot of ways that people can keep guns safe and secured so that unauthorized people don't have access to them. Uh, the First, let's talk about who an unauthorized access person is. In my state, an unauthorized person is someone who doesn't have a gun license. So you have to keep these away from uh, a significant other, a roommate. Uh, if your kids don't have gun licenses, you need to keep the guns locked and secured so the kids don't have access to them as well. There are a number of ways that you can keep the gun secured. You can use a cable lock. I like the cable locks. Uh, they're, they make it so the gun doesn't function at all. Uh, less, what I like less is a trigger lock, and a trigger lock's like a little clamshell that goes around the trigger guard. And sometimes with some guns, if you don't have the trigger guard on properly, you can pull the trigger guard back and the gun will discharge. So I'm not a fan of trigger locks, but trigger locks can work. The other thing that we can use are safes or cases. Some people have big safes. Um, the good thing about having a big safe is there's lots of room for more guns that you may be buying in the future. But a, right. if you're just buying one handgun, it'll come in a little plastic case most times, and that will have a cable lock with it. And you can put the cable lock around the handle if it keeps the gun, uh, keeps the case closed, or you can put it through the, uh, put the cable lock through the gun. Sometimes the cases have a little hole in them, or you can put a padlock through and you keep keep the case secure that way. There Charlie, are. Charlie, can I interrupt? Because I'd like to talk a little bit more about the unauthorized user part because I think that that's an interesting concept that depending on the state that you're in or the, the, the mental state that you're in that you don't really stop to think about who you've brought this gun home who are you going to allow to touch it who are you going to allow to have access to it who are you going to cause to have knowledge about it and who are you going to restrict and why are you going to restrict it so can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think that that's a, an area that I don't know that we think about enough, yet it, it is very worthy of that time to stop and think about it. Well, I, I live in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, you're not supposed to have, you're supposed to keep the guns locked and secured so unauthorized people don't have access. An unauthorized person is someone that doesn't have a gun license. I've been a gun instructor for uh, 13 or 14 years. What I did when my kids were young is I did Nerf gun safety. And Nerf gun safety is you can't point a gun at uh, a Nerf gun at someone you're not having a Nerf gun fight with. So when my son had his friends over and they're having Nerf gun fights, that was okay to shoot at them. But if my daughter was not in a Nerf gun fight, they couldn't point the gun at her. So we started the gun safety when the kids were very young and it wasn't, there wasn't all guns are loaded and you know safe directions, finger off the trigger. It's here's here's a Nerf gun. Well, obviously, we're not using real guns, but here's a Nerf gun. Keep it pointed in a safe direction. Don't point it at someone uh, that's not in the Nerf gun fight. That led to, when the kids were older, getting into the regular safety rules. Okay, say when we go to take them to the range, finger off the trigger, safe direction, and check to make sure that the gun's loaded. My kids are in their upper teen years, and when we go to the range now, we still go through the gun safety rules every single time. I still keep everything locked and secured so the kids don't have access to it, but they know where they're, but they're smart kids. They can figure out where the guns are kept. They can figure out, uh, they can figure out how to get to them if they really needed to, um, but they're still locked and secured so they don't have access to them. The, uh, the other thing, uh, what was, what, there was a lot that you asked there, <laughs> unauthorized people. Um, yeah, keeping them secured. So other than that, if um, I keep all of my guns locked and secured, so I keep the gun gun keys in one place, I keep the guns in the cases, and I keep padlocks on them. I do keep my my carry gun in a different place than all of the other guns. And that one, it's not easier to get to or quicker to get to. 
but it's not you know the keys aren't in one place and the guns under the bed and you've got to fight for that and get everything out underneath the bed to get to the gun my carry gun is something i'm going to put on when i head out and so it's easier for me to get to my carry gun than it is to get to um than to get to my ar15 or, or to my shotguns okay so so here's another question if we've got a brand new gun we brought it into the house do you advise that one person becomes the gun expert if there's a couple people and that they're all physically and legally capable should they all get knowledge how do you how do you pick who gets to learn about this new thing that just came into the house i i would say the person that that wanted to do this it doesn't matter if it's the the man or the wife or the husband or the woman doesn't doesn't make a difference whoever wanted to get the gun uh should be i would say would be the person that should have control over the gun. I'm going to use air quotes when I say control. I think they should be the one that knows where the keys are and where the gun is secure. That's going to be the person that would be probably more interested in uh, learning how to shoot and learning about gun safety and, and, and going out and going to the range. Once you have, once you're six, um, knowledgeable and safe and understand the fundamentals of shooting, then you can pass that on to the other people in the family. So for me, it was, I wanted to become the gun guy. I want to have a gun on the house. I'm keeping control of everything. I have the gun keys. The guns are one place. The ammunition is somewhere else. And it's, you know, one's on one floor of the house, the other's on the other floor of the house. So things weren't kept near each other. And honestly, I was okay with that because it was all brand new to me and my kids were very young. So we kept everything in two different places. When it was time to go to the range, um, We'd get the ammunition, we'd get the guns, we'd pack everything up, we'd go to the gun range, we'd go through the gun safety rules, make sure everyone knew what the safety rules are, and then we would we would shoot and then go back home and lock everything back up separately. Okay, Rob Morris, you got any questions on this? Um, talk about the many different types of small gun safes. I've seen ones that were as you say, the plastic box the gun comes in, great. By the way, that works if you have to travel with your firearm and you put it in your luggage as you fly to different places when the airlines fly us again. Um, and, uh, and when you call and find out exactly what the rules are because there are specific flying with a gun rules. Listen to that lady. Others look like a small safety deposit box. Some have Charlie, describe all the different variations you've seen. Couldn't look like almost anything. They they do look like almost anything. When I when I first got a handgun, I kept it. I went to Target, and I bought a Brinks money safe, and it was big enough to hold a revolver with a six inch barrel. I got I went to the fabric store and got some. Uh, squishy stuff the foam and I put that I cut it out just to fit inside of that because it was uh, it was a bank safe you know a little money safe and I kept the gun in there when I would go back and forth to the range because that's uh, I didn't want to take this big long gun case just to go be able to shoot a handgun so there are you can use things that not, aren't necessarily designed for guns if you don't have a, a gun safe or a gun case there are some other gun safes that have little fingerprint readers or little codes on them and you punch in the code and the door will pop open some of those have uh, it's just just a box with a code you punch in the code and the door opens up some of them have two floors uh, I've seen some cases that have that you can put a gun and wallet and jewelry and a passport um, put all this stuff inside of there I I personally don't trust the fingerprint readers I've had an iPhone uh, for a number of years now, and sometimes the fingerprint reader does not work, especially if my hands are wet. And the biometric fingerprint readers don't work on those uh, on a gun safe. So I'm not not a big fan of having those, but if it's got the little finger code, you punch in the code, do, 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 and that's, that's fine. There you go. Okay, well, Charlie Cook talking about gun storage, gun safety. Charlie is the host of Riding Shotgun with Charlie, and you can find him on SDRN.us, which is the Self-Defense Radio Network and our Self-Defense Radio Network family here. So SDRN.us, Riding Shotgun with Charlie. We'll be back with more videos talking about next, look up eye dominance. Do you even know what that means? I took a while. <laughs>